Welcome to church once again at Heart Mountain. This is Heart Mountain Ministries, and I am Pastor Rob Fisk. You need to go back and watch the worship that we just had. We've had such powerful anointing and worship lately. As a matter of fact, uh, three weeks ago, the worship that uh, was presented has gone viral. People are sharing it with other people who are sharing with other people. I don't know if it's the songs or just the anointing that day, but thank God, because people are worshiping God and giving him the glory due his name. All right, the armor of God. I love this message. Let me ask you first, where in the Bible do you find the armor of God? I'll give you a minute. Think. Mm Mm-hmm. Ephesians chapter 6 starting with verse 10 pretty much about uh, being strong in the Lord and the power of his might which is the whole point of this having his might surrounding us so the belt of truth Mm, this is a strong one you know I hate to do this but I've got to first tear down some ideas so we can build ourselves up in the truth of the Word of God. You know, it's like when you renovate your kitchen. You got to, you've got to do some uh, what do they call it? Uh, demolition first. You got to rip out the old countertops and you got to rip off uh, you know the cabinets on the walls. And you so I need to demolish some of the ideas that you've had about truth or the belt of truth in order to install or give you the real biblical belt of truth so you know that's what renewing of the mind is in romans 12 where it says you need to renew your mind actually the word is renovate tear down first and then build or or like if you go into the military service apparently they break you down i wasn't there but i've got good friends they break you down they tear you down to almost nothing and then they build you up in the image of what they want you to be a soldier a successful powerful soldier and that's what god wants for you we want to tear down the old and place in the new so here we go how many times on radio tv movies or even in conversation have you heard somebody say you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free (laughs) you know what wrong thanks for playing that's not even a whole scripture and that's the problem people say well you know you know the truth the truth the truth will set you free but let's look back to see what jesus literally said so we're tearing down you shall know the truth the truth will set you free and we're going to build up what it really said turn if would please to john chapter 8 and verse 30 i'm going to read you from the the king james version that's what i was raised in and i know i use a lot of more modern translations lately but uh, once in a while i go back to my roots king james in verse 30 john 8 30 jesus as it says as he spake these words many believed on him that's good but then said jesus to those jews which believed on him now here it is if if you continue in my word then you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free before i read it again i want you to consider that this is so important you just you can't just say you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free you've got to find out how you shall know the truth and jesus tells you the how so here it is again i'll start in verse 31 then said jesus to those jews which believed on him if you continue in my word and that's what i've been talking about meditating and studying the word if you continue in my word then are you my disciples indeed and then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free so knowing the whole verse really helps you have to continue in the word all right let's look at some images of what people think the belt of truth would have looked like here the first image here most believe the belt was more than just a belt but it had some form of protection hanging from it i agree the next picture more of the same idea of protection belt of truth and then how about this protection wow pretty solid all right let me read just a little bit knowing the truth about god's word is essential to your protection and let me say this without insulting my fellow christians i really don't want to insult you but listen most christians don't know the word 
<laughs> and I'm glad that you're coming here to learn. But for years, I've been able to tell whether you know the word or not. How do I know? Can I? Shall I share you with? We share with you my secret. Yeah, sure, I will. My secret, of course, comes from the scriptures, something Jesus said. This is how I know when I'm talking to you, whether you know the word of God or whether you've studied the word of God or not, whether you have, have the belt of truth on or not. Here it is, Matthew twelve thirty four, in the English Standard Version. Jesus started off saying, you brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? Check it out. For out of the abundance of the heart... The mouth speaks. I'll say that part again. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, we'll talk, and then afterwards I'll I'll be with Linda, and I'll say to her, you know, I don't ever hear the word of God coming out of that person's mouth. And I don't say that in, you know, looking down. I don't want you to get hurt. So this tells me. If, if I'm not hearing the word of God coming out of your mouth, it tells me your heart is not full of the word and you don't have on the belt of truth and you're going to get hurt. And I don't want that for you. And I know you get really tired of we preachers telling you over and over, you have to study the word of God to get it in your heart. But we have to tell you that and you have to do it. Otherwise, when the enemy attacks, you'll fall. So did Jesus have the belt of truth on? Yep. And not just because he was Jesus. Let me read you a couple of scriptures. In Luke chapter 2, in the NIV, great scripture. Every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. When he was 12 years old, can you imagine Jesus at 12 years old? They went up to the festival according to the custom. And after the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. <laughs> Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Oh boy. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. And after three days, stop. This, this scripture... <laughs> You know, I've had my children, you know, get lost in a store before. Carrie got lost one time at Disney uh, in Epcot. Oh, it was such a frightening experience. I literally ran back to where, you know, they have a, an official booth, you know, to report her missing. And thankfully, somebody had found her or had reported her in a store, you know, one of the, uh, where, where you buy the trinkets and things like that. And she got fascinated and... We walked out, and she was still playing with the toys. Boy, did that make my heart skip. But we found her, and that, boy, that made my heart glad. I can relate to Mary and Joseph, only they're thinking, we've lost the Son of God. It's like, oh, my goodness, that must have been frightening. It kind of tickles me, too, to think about that. Anyway, after three days, they found him in the temple courts. Three days. Wow. He was sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him, that's Jesus, at 12 years old, was amazed at his understanding and his answers. Then his parents saw him. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And Jesus calmly says, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? <laughs> Amazing verse. But we know that Jesus knew the scriptures. And here's another one. It's in Luke 4, 16, in the uh, BSB version. It says, Then Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. As was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath. And when he stood to read, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written. Now, how could Jesus unroll the scroll and find the place where it was written, except that he had experienced? Experience. He'd read the scrolls, he'd studied the scrolls, and in them he had found himself. Very fascinating. Verse 18, he found the place where it said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he's, he's anointed to me to preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, and proclaim the year of the, of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, returned it to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began by saying, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Again, 
how did Jesus know where to find Isaiah chapter 61? Because he had read it and he had studied the word. Hey, if Jesus studied the word, it's good enough for me. Amen. So second thought, we hear lies in the news all the time. And God tells us in his holy word not to even think about lies. Check out what the Bible says we should think about. Philippians 4, 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true. You see that? We got to think about the things that are true, not lies. This is all part of the belt of truth and the truth of the word of God. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure, lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So listen, if you're thinking about lies, you're wearing the belt of lies. We need to turn that off. We need to seek the truth. And most truth is found in the Word of God. We really need to get into the Word of God more and more. Feet. We have time for one more piece of the armor. (laughs) Your feet. Check it out. Picture number one shows not just the feet protected, but more protection up a little ways. I believe that to be true. But picture number two, put it up here. It shows what I heard a wise pastor say recently. He said that the Roman soldiers had leather, uh, you know, more than a sandal. They were they were really strapped to the feet nice and tight. He said because when war approached, he said they would dig their feet in. The Bible in Ephesians says to stand, stand therefore. And so the Roman soldiers, he said, would, would dig their feet into the ground. And the leather feet, uh, the shod with leather, helped them to really grip the ground. And so when the enemy approached, you know, at the last moment, they would lift up their spears and they, the enemy would be killed upon their spears. And then they could take their swords and, you know, defeat the enemy. And they, they stood firm. He said, any soldier that didn't stand firm was disgraced and put to the back. The good soldiers stood firm. And that's part of the reason that they wore that kind of uh, uh, regalia on their feet. It helped them to stand, which is what the Bible says. In Ephesians 6, 14, New King James Version, stand therefore, skip ahead to verse 15, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Let me stop there just for a moment. Do you know what the gospel is? Do you know where to find the gospel? (laughs) Let me, you need to write these things down. I'm going to end up at 1 Corinthians 15, 3, which is what actually talks about the gospel. But what about John 3, 16? And what about John 1, 12? As many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. You need to be prepared with the gospel. Have your feet shod with the gospel. So if somebody asks you, you know what to say. Remember John three sixteen: For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We need to have these things at the ready. You need to have your feet prepared with the gospel of peace. And then finally, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 3. I'm going to start with 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel. See, we're talking about the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. And so will the people you minister to. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you believed in vain. So here it is, verse 3. For what I received, I passed on to you as a first importance, that Christ died for our sins. Number one, this is the gospel, according to the scriptures. Number two, he was buried. Number three, he was raised on the third day, according to scriptures. The gospel of peace, the Bible says, on your feet makes your feet beautiful. I have beautiful feet. Do you? If you preach the gospel, you do. So here we go. One more verse. Romans 10, 13. And the King James once again. For who, whosoever shall call upon it on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. (laughs) So you have beautiful feet when you're ready with the gospel. Get these scriptures at the ready. John 3.16 and... uh, John uh, 1 12 and 1 Corinthians 
uh, 15, 3, and 4. There's other ones. You can go back to our first series. This is the third in a series. You can go back to number one and learn more salvation scriptures. So listen, a final thought before I, before I conclude. I've thought about this a long time. You know, God, G-O-D. Do you realize the first two letters of the name God are go? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That is preparation for your feet. And then you go use that wonderful feet that you have in the preparation of the gospel and you preach the gospel to every creature. You could do it. Just get yourself prepared. You'll find yourself, hmm, I'll have to teach on this sometime, changing the conversation to God. And then you can ask them if they know God and they can ask you how to be saved. It's a wonderful thing. I'll have to do that later. So be meditating on these armor scriptures. Go back and watch the first two videos where I teach putting on the armor of God. Learn, study, be protected. So when the enemy comes, you can defeat him every time. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the people. I pray for myself to give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of you. Let us know more and more about the belt of truth and let us have a desire, Father. Take away the desire for the world and give us a great desire for you and for your word that we may study and meditate these things and just have the armor of God become so strong on us and permanent on us so we may def defeat the enemy every time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want you strong. I really do. So, listen. Uh, it's really important that you share these videos. Um, it's interesting. We're getting we're showing up in different places now, which is really awesome. Getting some traction, and I have you to thank for it. So, I'm asking you to help me spread the gospel everywhere. I want to go in different countries. If you know somebody in different countries, just go ahead and share the videos there. And you've got friends and family that you know could use this teaching so they become strong in the Lord and the power of His might. So write to us, Heart Mountain Ministries at gmail.com, Heart Mountain Ministries at gmail.com, and also go to our website, heartmountministries.com. And it's, uh, it's really beautiful. And you'll find out more about the ministry. Uh, you'll find out if you wanted to support the ministry, how to do so. Most importantly, um, you'll, be, you'll be blessed to become a partner with us. And you'll share with us in the blessings. As we win people to the Lord, you'll get the blessings too because you're supporting us. So anyway, God bless you. Until next week, come on back. We're going to try to finish up on the armor of God. Until then, study and be blessed.